computer. There we go. So, hello, Peruvian Leapers. Okay, my name is Millie, and I organize with Zoe all the Leap programs here. And what I um, also do is I am the Peru girl in the office. I love Peru. I have taken midlife groups there and I'm heading back this November. So I know personally that you are in for a massive treat. So the aim of this recording, this, this kind of gathering, is to get you organized. So we are going to run through your itinerary, your flights, um, entry information, kit, health and safety, phones, Wi-Fi, all that type of stuff so that you feel fully, fully excited and informed and your expectations are perfectly aligned. OK, so there are no surprises when you get there. OK, next. so to kickstart, let's do the flights. OK, saying that Martha's just given us a bit of a a bit of a uh, shake up. So there are six of you currently going, which is absolutely perfect because that is the perfect number to fit into one homestay. And I know that you're going to be staying with the lovely Glenny, who I will come back to later in the conversation. So. You are all, is it all getting there on the 6th, on the same plane, okay? Uh, apart from Isadora, I'm reading here, flying out of Costa Rica, totally proof of leaving Peru, coming from Costa Rica. Yeah, so Zoe's in charge and helping you with that flight. Okay, so we will organize organize everything that you need. Okay, no problem. So on arrival, and Isadora, you will be scooped up. You are going to be met by the lovely Sam. And um, and who else are you going to be? And Manuel, who is going to be your driver. Uh, you're just kind of, he is kind of the hero of, of Andy and Alliance. Okay. So you're going to be picked up and then you will be driven as about an hour and a half journey, the most beautiful journey down into the Sacred Valley um, to Kalka, which is going to be your base for the first two weeks. OK, so as you know, it's a three week program. First two weeks are based in the Sacred Valley in the mountains. The third week, you're going to go change a scene into the deep, dark Amazon. OK, so it is really, really exciting. So what you've got in store for you. OK, what is coming up? So you're going to arrive and you're going to be staying. Your base for the first two weeks is going to be with the glorious Glenny in a home state. Now, this is a what I love about the Peru program is that it is giving you access to local people going about their day-to-day -day lives. And Glenny is one of those heavenly human beings, okay? I quite simply, I love her. And you too will. She doesn't speak a word of English, but my God, you can communicate, okay? I don't know how we managed it. I managed it, but by the end of it, I knew everything about her, her, her kids, how many kids she's got, her dogs, cats, you name it, it's all there. So Glenny's home, you literally describing Kalka, the river runs through it. It's a pretty Spanish type of town with a, imagine a huge square in the middle with funky little, um, you've got great little restaurants and bars all around the edge, a great market that appears in the scene and all these streets. But at the backdrop is this fabulous mountain which rises up above it. So it's got a beautiful setting. Anyway, Glenny's house, you're going to go through a door and you're going to think, hello, where are we going here? And you're going to go through this door, which looks like nothing on the back side of the street, the knackered old door. And then you come into the central atrium and that is your home with all your bedrooms around, little kitchen, you've got your water, everything happens in that middle atrium, your kind of hangout zone. That's where Glenny hangs up all your washing. That's where she peels her spuds. It is 
a very basic homestay, but it is so cozy. You all have your own bedroom, you know, with proper beds, tables, you know, chest of drawers, duvets, blankets, super cozy. Um, there's probably three bathrooms which you all share, so depending on where you were. Now, I you're, uh, was in the room under the stairs. Now, that room doesn't have a window, but it does under the stairs. But let me tell you, that is a very cosy room. So, it, it you know, when you kind of get over there, wow, we're staying in a proper, proper Peruvian local home. You realize that actually it's really clean, it's really comfortable, and you really make it. It feels like home. Glenny cooks delicious food. Let her mother you. If you get there and you get headaches or a tummy ache, because we'll talk about the altitude, um, let her give you one of her herbal teas. Oh, they're delicious. She's got a she's got a homemade remedy for everything. So just let her let her look after you you know she looked after me and all my friends so she will do the same to you she's a real mothering figure she's heaven okay so the first two weeks that is going to be your base the third week you are then off into the amazon and you say goodbye to the sacred valley okay so any questions so far by you two girls no nope? okay okay happy Am I waffling? I know I'm waffling, but it is exciting. Okay, so I have got a very detailed itinerary of every single day where you're going to have breakfast, lunch, tea, and supper. Okay, I'm not going to go through that much detail. I'm just going to give you the concept of each week. Okay, so um, week one, let me just, let me just, um, itinerary. Okay, week one. Is all about your community project and acclimatizing. Okay. So this whole experience has been put together by the um, Andean Alliance. Okay. They are an NGO set up by a great team. Kerry, you will love her. She is my great friend. Um, she has she and her team have set this up, and it's all about helping the high Andean farmers exist okay find a new existence with all the challenges of climate change retreating glaciers they are historically totally dependent on the potato growing harvesting selling the potato fun fact did you know and actually you can correct me i think there are about five thousand varieties of potatoes that come out of peru i know who knew if you a crisp lover oh my god you can buy so many different flavor crisps it's just like for me that is why I'm returning. Um, so their, their objective, back to ASD, their objective is to help them find an alternative method of survival. And through their really clever farming techniques, they are now able to grow strawberries at 4,000 meters high, which they now sell to some of the top restaurants in Nima and Cusco. So it's really, really exciting and you will learn all about it. They have a demonstration farm called Ecoella, which is literally um, five, 10 minute walk. And I'd say no, it's probably about 20 minute walk from Calca, but usually go by car where you will learn all about this, meet the people behind it and get a real feel for the backbone of this program and the opportunities through them that this program can deliver for you to experience, okay? Such as going in to the high Andes to meet these amazing communities and to meet them as friends and not as tourists, which is a very, very special thing to do. So in that first week, we need to get you ready for the high altitude. So you're gonna be learning about the farming, learning about the struggles, helping and contributing, learning some basic Spanish every day. So when you do get up to meet these amazing communities, you can at least communicate with basic, basic communication, okay? So, and we're getting you acclimatized. 
Calcare is about two and a half thousand um, meters above sea level. So you are going to feel the altitude immediately. OK, now I I when I was there, I didn't take any altitude sickness pills. I just just went for it, relied on chewing lots of cocoa tea, Glenny's herbal things. But if you get there and you struggle OK, with headaches or feel sick, don't worry. There are great doctors in the valley that we could take you to to get proper acclimatizing um, medication if that happens to you. OK, but in that week, you're going to be it's all about keeping hydrated, climbing up high during the day and coming back down low. So there's going to be several little hikes, um, fun things to do just to get you up. There's a lovely chapel hike. It gives you amazing views over the, the, the village coming back down so that your body goes up and down, getting acclimatized, ready for week two, okay? But in week one, before I before we leave week one, the highlights, okay? Yes, it's about learning Spanish, learning about the farming and getting acclimatized, okay? But you're also going to be meeting, I'm just reading the itinerary, you're going to um, be meeting some local, um, doing a local project with the, um, with the kids, a jewelry making project, going to do, um, just looking at the itinerary, does, oh, the, the Erco Youth Jewelry Project, you are going to the Saclo communi um, community, you're going to go and visit the Cuenco community, okay? So that's your big high altitude day coming back low. So you're you're going out that day, out of out of the valley to meet these amazing people. And also you're going to do a, um, to be introduced to a textile workshop, which is really, really special. Um, we did it to see how these, their textiles, which you are going to be bamboozled, the shopping potential in Peru is huge, let me tell you. But you will be amazed. And I really want to show you that the textiles are still made on hand looms, which literally have been the same, the, the same looms going for the last hundreds of years. So it's really, really special. And it will really make you see and value anything that you buy in the markets making sure that you haven't bought rubbish from China and you've bought the real deal, okay? So that, that is kind of week one, the plan and the highlights. So on the Saturday, you're still going to be working and you're gonna, cause you're gonna go and do this hike in that kind of high community, which I'm gonna drop down in much, much more detail. But on Sunday, you've got a free day and then on Monday, you're going to have a free day. So we just kind of twizzled that. You want, so the second week is all about Machu Picchu and Rainbow Mountain and the high altitude experience. Okay. So you, the villages that you've met so far are kind of mid level up the valley. So probably still in the tree line, which is absolutely stunning in itself but what is really special is to get above the tree line to see the high altitude communities which you are which just blow your mind okay the vistas the views it is just extraordinary so the first day on the tuesday you're going to get up early like 5 a.m and you're going to go and see rainbow mountain okay that's your big day then you're coming back and then you're going to be up and you're this is your high altitude overnight, which was actually weirdly part of my um, Machu Picchu experience. So I'll, I'll ex explain about Machu Picchu. But so you're going to go with our guide to his family in Quishirani, where you're going to meet the community there. You're going to spend the night in Lares explore all the hot springs and it's you will love it okay then you're going to come down down from the community 
transfer to Oli Tambo, which is further down the valley, explore and have the night there in Oli Tambo. I love Oli Tambo. It's a super cool town and it's got amazing ruins there. It's so cool and pretty. So you'll love it. For the next day, when you're going to catch the train, the early train to go further down the valley to find Machu Picchu. Okay. Now, there are so many different ways to get to Machu Picchu. So people say, oh, how did you get to Machu Picchu? And um, they go, oh, I did, I did the Inca Trail. You're going to feel sorry for them because that is an experience. The, the whole trekking to Machu Picchu involves four days, okay? And it's in four days of experiencing the high altitude Andes, mid-level altitude, altitude, going down to the cloud forest and entering in, okay? If you did it through, if you, you could, there are three valleys to do that. The first valley is the Inca Trail, the official Inca Trail, which is just so touristy, you, you would die. Color-coded tents, color-coded porters. The other is the Salcantary Trek, which is, it's nice, but it's, it's, it's got set campsites and da, da, da. again, pretty touristy. Or the Lares Valley, Valley. That is what you have experienced. So in the last two weeks, you have experienced hiking, living, meeting all the high altitude communities. So you have done it already in spades. It's just we've broken it up. OK, and we've broken it up because traditionally we don't we never know exactly how fit everyone is going to be. And everybody, you know, might not want to do that four day slog in. So that's why you've got a bit of it in week one, and you've got a bit of it in week two. And then the final day of Machu Picchu is you're going to go in on the train um, right in to Aqua Calientis. And we're going to take a view there, depending on how fit you are and how you're feeling, depending on, you know, how you've been coping with the altitude. And you might be exhausted, but you might be up for it because you can hike up to it, okay, through the cloud forest. And then you appear at this viewpoint and have a -na! moment of Machu Picchu there in all its glory. That is what I would aim to do, okay? But of course, you don't have to do it. You can catch the bus and take you all the way up there and all the way down. But if you've got it in you, please hike up, see it in all its glory, and then catch the bus down. Okay? And then when you're done, you'll catch the train out and back to Calca for your final night. Okay? Then you're going to have a two free days. Well, a whole day Saturday is completely free and the evening for you to tinker about. We'll come to what you do on your free days later. Tinker about. And then on Sunday, you've got a free day, but you're going to have to pack up, get rid of, say goodbye to everyone. And that night you're on your big overnight bus with Sam, your guide, into the Amazon. For week three. Okay. So week three, you're going to arrive, your destination is leaving Cusco to Puerto Maldonado. Okay, I know, my Spanish is terrible. Um, so that is where your destination is. That is where you're going to set up your, to kind of start off in your hotel, which is very nice. It's kind of a lodge, it's got a nice pool, and that's where you can literally stretch out and think, oh my God, how have we gone from the dry, cool Andes to the hot, humid, Amazon. Okay. So you've got one night to acclimatize before you then in you go. Okay. And you've got two nights of going right into the Amazon to Lake Sandoval, where you're going to be staying in very rustic jungle huts. Okay. You're going to get beds, of course, and mosquito nights, mosquito nets all provided. But you are open to the elements. So it is going to be incredible. You're going to see. You've got amazing guides. You're going to see amazing stars, animal life, um, uh, kind of wildlife, bird life. It's, it's all there for you to see. And if you think you're going to get much sleep, I doubt it. Because the jungle 
The Amazon is the noisiest place on the planet. So it is such a privilege to see it. You are so lucky. And we are thrilled to be able to add this into the itinerary this year. So that is going to be super, super cool. But you've got to brace yourself. It is going to be rustic for those two nights out in the wild. So I'll come back to what you're going to take and how to manage it. Then you're going to come back out of the jungle. You've got an extra night in Puerto Maldonado to chill your beans. And the next day you can explore Puerto Maldonado and the town, which is lovely. And then that is it. You can go back um, uh, free afternoon to explore rest. Goodbye dinner. And then the next day you go back to Cusco and off you go home. So it is a busy, busy itinerary, but it is full of contrast. It is full of challenge at times, phys you know, physical challenge because you've got the high altitude and then you've got the contrast of the intensity of the humidity of the jungle. But it is so worth it because you're going to be seeing and meeting some incredible people and seeing some amazing sights. I mean, literally breathtaking. And this isn't touristy, touristy Peru. That This is not Peru hop. This is getting off the beaten track to see the extraordinary characters, you know, tucked away in these mountains. So does that sound good? I hope so. I'm so jealous. Actually, I'm not jealous because I'm doing it. I'm doing it myself with a group of friends in November. So, um, so all good. Okay, so girls, any questions so far about the itinerary? No, no, no. Okay, so I will send you a kind of of, of a breakdown of how it of, of how it's going to work. So, but I just haven't worked out how to present it yet. So, bear with me. Um, okay, so when it comes to your clothing list, I'm just going to double check in your my leap about the Amazon, but. In um, in the basic things which you're going to wear when you're in the Andes, you know, when you're in the homestays, you want you, during the day you're going to be kind of jeans, leggings, uh, shorts. Um, but I was in, I know this is a tragic look, but I was in trekking trousers, kind of walking trousers. Uh, exercise leggings that's what I kind of wore every single day and a pair of really sturdy if you've got walking boots great take them but if you haven't and you're going to purchase something I wouldn't purchase walking boots I would purchase some of those really good um terrain what are they called speed cross trainers you know really grippy trainers that's what you need for for hiking up in, in the Andes so that's a really, really good thing to take. Um, when you're hiking, you're going to want, I would take in a couple of, you know, these quick drying, if you've been skiing, you know, those under layers, base layers, um, a puffer jacket and a waterproof jacket. It won't be raining, but you never know in the Andes. It, the weather could change literally just like that. So you do need a waterproof Gore-Tex jacket, something that is really going to, to work. Okay. Yes, a couple of fleeces, but you can buy loads of nice jumpers out there. You can buy loads of nice hats, gloves, scarves. So don't take any of that. You're going to want to buy it out there, the local stuff. It's so nice and so soft. Um, so let me just have another look at the um at the at the kit list just to make sure if everything is there. But there are kind of random things to take. When you're at Glenny's house, things that I really appreciated was a pair of slippers. Okay. I loved the fact that I had taken my cozy slippers. They they were like a pair of Uggs, but they're cheap Uggs. Okay. That's and I and so every evening after my kind of hikes and project work, da da da, I would just slip into some kind of cozy tracksuit, my Uggs and a big slobby jumper. 
and my scarf. That's what I was wandering around the town in. But you might want something a bit more, you know, kind of a nice shirt. My sister that came with me was bitter and twisted. And she said, I wish I'd bought a nice shirt to wear in the evening. She's like, okay. But it, you know, the, the vibe there is all very, very chilled. But the other really essential thing, which I, I really liked was a pair of pajamas, because it's cozy, uh, a hot water bottle, that was really appreciated. And uh, earplugs, essential, okay, if, if you're a light sleeper, because it is so noisy in the homestay. Dogs barking, not necessarily at Glenny's house, but next door. There's just so much activity going on. So earplugs were a real winner. Bathroom management, okay, this is another great top tip. Try and t a wash bag, try and take a wash bag, which has a, um, a hook on it. You know, those ones that unfold so that when you go into the bathroom, you can just hook it on the door and you've got everything there because, you you know, the floor it always gets wet and kind of. Ugh, so it was just really nice to have it being able to hang up. That's top tip. Um, but any other top tips I'll put in your My Leap kit list. Um, the phone chargers, that's you just got to take. It's an American plug. So take that. Um, money, they've got ATMs everywhere. So that is super, super easy. Wi-Fi, um, you don't have it at Glenny's house, but you do in, in the um, Andean Alliance's main office. Super fast Wi-Fi. In all the cafes and the restaurants, super fast Wi-Fi, okay? But you can get a local SIM there that's really easy to sort out on arrival. And Sam will show you how to do that. There's ZIM card places everywhere. Okay, all good? All good. Okay, so um, health and safety. Okay, so we've touched on um, the altitude. Okay, so you're going to be briefed to an inch of your life when you're there about how to manage the altitude, but it, rehydrate, rehydrate all the time. So I would be highly recommend you really don't have any alcohol for at least five days, just as your body gets used to it. Okay. Um, uh, that's, that is the main thing when it comes to kind of safety. Um, we will be keeping an eye on you with the altitude and with everything else. So the hospitals, Doctors and everything in Peru are absolutely brilliant and very local, easy to access. So that is no problem. Dogs in Calca, you're going to be amazed. There are dogs everywhere, literally street dogs everywhere who are really happy, looked after by everybody, but don't go touching them because they highly likely have got fleas. OK, so. Just don't start making friends with the dogs on the road. You know, they will follow you literally every time we went from the from the ice cream, kind of from the bar back to Glenny's. You've got a trail of dogs following you. Yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ, you know, but you just ignore them. They are absolutely harmless. They're just waiting for some, you know, for for a snack, you know, so and they're and, and, and a pat. But don't go patting them. Um, um, I think that really is it. Washing clothes, Glenny will do it for you. Okay, she is so kind. She will do. She'll do anything for you. Um, but I just ask if you do get her to do all your washing, which you will, please can you just give her a tip at the end and just make just make her feel super special, and. And please, what's really, really lovely is if you take her a little gift, okay? She loves uh, chocolate, biscuits, anything like that. Just a little a, a little gift. And if you love anything weird or wonderful, like, ah, oh, breakfast and not the same without Marmite, peanut butter, da -da -da, something local, take it. She won't be offended, okay? Um, we took delicious coffee because we're all coffee addicts. She was very happy to do that. Or you get the Peruvian style coffee. And Kerry and Sam have asked for a treat. They have asked for 
They haven't asked. They just, I know, this is what they love. Kerry loves Orange Club biscuits. Who knew? She loves them. And Sam loves digestive dark chocolate biscuits. Who knew? So if anyone's got any spare space in their bags, will you just think about that? They would so appreciate it. They really, really would. So that's all from me right now. That's all I wanted to, to kind of run through. So the itinerary is in three parts, three contrasts, loads of adventures. We're going to look after and manage the altitude. Um, your free time, okay, now your free time, it is very easy just to hang out. I want you to hang out in Calca and have a really good time. But if you want to go up to Cusco, it is so easy to do that, okay? And you can just ask Manuel to take you up there. It's only an hour and a half and you can book into a hostel up there for the night and you have a great, great time. So that's very easy to do because yes, you're going to go off grid, but you also want to have fun as well. So the six of you, I want you to, you know, plan some fun things. Okay. That's it from me. That's it. Over and out. I wish you the best trip ever and send my love to Glenny and all the team out there. So girls, any questions before we go? No. Are you excited? I'm excited for you. You are in for a treat. Okay, so I will send you your itinerary and I'm going to upla update the Thank kit you. list. Okay, all good? Goodbye. Yes, thank you. Goodbye to you all, to you both. Oh, okay. Bye. I'm, I'm, I'm Bye. off now anyway, but, but you're okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's all, it's all good.